Friends, I'm so glad that you've joined us for the broadcast today. My son Aaron and I will be teaching from Ephesians chapter one and we'll be sharing on Paul's prayer. This may be the most powerful prayer in all of the New Testament. In, in, for us as believers, it is very, very powerful. So you wanna get a hold of this and begin to understand what Paul teaches us in the realm of prayer that we can pray from a position of victory. Praise the Lord, friends. We are in Ephesians chapter one today. I have my son Aaron with us. Uh, we've talked prior to this on our first two broadcasts this week. We talked about who we are and what we have in Christ, that we have a new position in a new condition, that we're blessed, chosen, holy, blameless, predestined to succeed, made accepted in the beloved. We're redeemed from every curse, forgiven for every sin. And then in the second broadcast, we talked about the fact uh, that we have a brand new purpose in Christ. Yeah. And we entered into that when we got saved. But then when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, I believe God enhances it and even shows you. So God has this general overall plan for all of humanity to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. But then he has a very specific plan for our life. And then we, so we talked about the purpose of God, and then we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to live that out. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And now we're going to move on into this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, uh, this prayer that the Apostle Paul prays for the church at Ephesus. This may be one of the most powerful prayers in all of the Scripture. What an amazing, amazing prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul prays, and I love to teach on the prayers of Paul in Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter three, Philippians chapter one, and Colossians chapter one. These may be the most uh, powerful prayers in all of the scripture. And I believe it really shows us a New Testament way to pray. Mm -hmm. The problem is today, too many saints are still praying Old Testament prayers. And Paul does not pray with any sense of lack, any sense of defeat, any sense of need, but he only prays with this sense. You need to know who Christ is. You need to know what he's called you to do. You need to know what he's invested in you so that you can get the job done. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah, and not so. too long ago, uh, my wife and I kind of felt led to uh, to make a large uh, gift, a large donation, a large investment into uh, Mark Hankins' ministry. Um, they're building a, a new facility for his ministry headquarters. And um, we, we gave, you know, we, I, she kind of told me how much she wanted to do, so it took me a while to, to save up and to make that happen. But um, he wrote a really nice uh, thank you letter, and, um, you know, um, it, it's, it's very sweet what he wrote, but he actually prayed uh, this, this scripture over us, that we would have a revelation knowledge, that spirit of wisdom and revelation that that... Um, that just came from that gift that we, you know, sowed into his ministry. So, and uh, to me, that meant more than anything, because that, that's something that I really value and I, I want to grow in is that revelation knowledge that comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is powerful, Aaron. When we look at this in Ephesians chapter one, verse 15, Paul begins to pray and he says, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love to all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Mm. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you the uh, spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing that Paul prays is that we would get a revelation of who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our church vision and we have it on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it said, number one, we want people to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I believe that's the ultimate goal of the gospel mm -hmm. is to know Jesus. And that knowing, it's not just um, knowing about something or knowing the facts or knowing the doctrine or knowing the lingo. It's, it's having a relationship, that it's type of knowing. A personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
That's what Paul talks about when he says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him mm -hmm. and, the, and the power of his resurrection being made conformable to his death. So, you know, that I may come to know Jesus. That's a better way to know. You know, in the, in the Greek, there's this word for knowledge, gnosis, mm -hmm. which is talking about, you know... Uh, Knowing the facts. Well, there's there's another kind, but but that's having knowledge. But then there's this word epinosis, mm -hmm. and it's talking about revelation knowledge. Mm -hmm. And for instance, you can tell your two year old the stove is hot, mm -hmm. but when this, your two year old touches the stove that's hot, he goes ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> he gets a revelation. Mm -hmm. The stove is hot. If I touch that, it's going to hurt. It's going to burn me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a difference in knowing about Jesus. There's, there's a lot of people teaching about Jesus, sweet little Jesus, born in a manger, sweet mm -hmm. little Jesus, you know, but they have no personal revelation. Mm -hmm. And you need to have a personal revelation of who Jesus is. You need to come to know Jesus. It's also, I believe, what Paul, Peter writes about in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, when it says, His divine power has given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. It's talking about an experiential relationship a, through a relationship with Jesus who called us to glory and virtue. Then he says this in verse 4, whereby through this relationship with Jesus are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption or the principle of death that's in this world through lust. There's a principle of death that's working in this world because of Adam's transgression, mm -hmm. because of lust in the garden. Mm -hmm. and, and the world is getting darker and darker. But when we are born again, the light of Jesus shines on the you inside know, there, of us. There's a spirit of death, you know, just even in this nation, people just, it's, it's an idol. You know, uh, when, when Roe v. Wade got overturned recently, you just saw how many people cling to that uh, just, just pro-death it's terrible. Spirit. And, and, it and when, when you take away someone's idols, you, you really, they come after you. They get upset, you know, just like Gideon, uh, the angel of the Lord told him to go take down the, you know, the altar of Baal and, and people wanted to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. And so he's saying that the God, the father of glory would give you the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of Jesus. We want people to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said this in John 17, verse three, and he was praying right there for himself, but right in the middle of it. And he's, he said, I came from glory. I'm going to glory. I'm living for the glory of God right in the middle of it. He says, this is eternal life. This is life eternal. That they may know the, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom, whom he sent. He's talking about that personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. And so Paul's praying that you, that you would come to know Jesus, that you get a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He says, secondly, in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Mm. And when you study this out, in the Greek, it's like photizo, that you get the picture, mm. that you get a revelation. He says that you may know, that you may have absolute knowledge of the hope of his calling, that you would know what he called you to do. Mm. Praise God. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. Man, what, what cranks God's tractor, what God gets God excited is the saints. God's inheritance is in the saints. His glory is in the saints. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Praise God. He put his glory in us and it's in the church. Uh -huh. And so he says, number one, I want you to know him. Number two, I want you to know what he's called you to do. Uh -huh. And if you get a revelation of what God's called you to do, it'll change your life. You know, I believe that's a reason a lot of people never go really far in life uh -huh. and never accomplish a lot. Even uh, Kenneth E. Hagin, Papa Hagin, we call him, he, he said that God spoke to him and said, many ministers of the gospel never fulfill their full potential in Christ. They never even get to their ultimate calling. And I think there's tests that you have to pass mm -hmm. along the way. And, and so I don't want to just spend my life doing my own thing. And I don't want to just be in part of God's will, but I want to be walking out the purpose and the plan of God. Uh, for my life. Mm -hmm. And so he's talking about getting a revelation. You know, in about the year 2005 or 2006, when we had been in Colorado Springs for five or six years, 
uh, uh, it w I think it was about uh, 2006, so about five years. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Womack came and he preached at our anniversary celebration, and he's been preaching at our anniversary celebration uh, about the last 20 years. We generally have it the last Sunday of uh, September, first Sunday of October. But he preached and uh, he, he ministered to your mom and I, and he said, um, you know, that we worked together like a well-oiled machine, but he said we were together able to minister to many, many more people, but we didn't have the people around us, the team around us, really, to be able to do that yet. But God's been developing that, that team, but he spoke to me, and he said that I was in the second part of a five-part uh, plan that God had for my life and ministry. And as I prayed about that, God really spoke to me. And he said, the first part was building the church in Kit Carson. The second uh, part was building the church here. He said there would be three more parts. The third part would be television and media ministry, which is what we're, we're really flowing in now, along with the church. He said, out of the church in Colorado Springs, there will come three major areas. The fourth part, he said, would be more to do with pastors and churches. And we're flowing in that. I'm going just next week to, to do the five-year anniversary for Pastor Derek Kerber in Vermont. Okay. Praise God. And we ordained him a few years ago, and he has listened to me. God's really blessed him, you know, in, in a rural area of Vermont, blessed his ministry, his okay. church there. We've helped by Pastor Max Cornell. He came and was my assistant pastor for three years. We helped him plant a church in Kansas City, Karis Church in uh, western Kansas City. Max and Molly Cornell, great pastors, great community there, great ministers of the gospel. We helped Pastor Brian Clark and his wife Ashley, uh, you know, uh, purchase a property in Greenville, uh, North Carolina, or Greensboro, North Carolina. And so, you know what? We, we've been able to do these things, and, and, and what an honor it is to do this. But, you know, we're moving by the Spirit of God into these things, and now I'm ministering more and more. I'm going every month, you know, this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to minister the gospel and at different places. And, you know, I, I'm here on most Sundays, but you're here helping carry the load, helping minister to the people, really pastor the church, and you're ministering it, you know, on Wednesday nights, and I'm here when I'm not out, I'm here. But, uh, you know, thank God we, have, we know where God's taken us. He said the fifth part of this plan would more, be more to do with Bible school. And I don't know exactly what that entails. But, you know, I was doing all of those things. But it, it's amazing when God shows you the plan. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been ministering. You talk about 2006. We've been ministering the gospel full time for 20, you know, eight years mm -hmm. in 2006 or, or whatever it was. Maybe 18 years. 18 years full time in 2006 when God made that known to us. And then when God shows you things ahead of time, then you can begin to make plans, begin to develop things and move into those things. So he, he says this, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you'd get a picture of what God has for you, that you might know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. How does your calling help you fulfill God's purpose because God's purpose is the harvest. God's purpose is the saints. God's purpose is the I love that he uses church. that word enlightened too. Just a lot of people need need the light bulb just to come on. Come, to come on. Yeah. The, the eyes of your understanding. That's talking about your heart. You're not just not just your understanding with your mind, but your your spiritual understanding. You know, um, we have the mind of Christ that that God may instruct us. Um, so our, your understanding isn't just with your, your brain, but it's also with your heart. Amen. And that's, that's really where we receive a lot of this um, wisdom and revelation uh, in Christ. It's, it's, in your, it's in your heart, deep within your heart, not just, not just, um, just in your knowledge and your thinking and your reasoning, but, but God wants in your you to spirit. understand things in your heart and yeah. have a desire in your spirit. Yeah. The Bible says the spirit of man is the light, the lamp, the candle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he lights all the inward parts of the belly. I think mm. that's Proverbs 20, 27. Mm. Yeah, it might be 27, 20, but I think it's Proverbs 20, 27. And so it's in the spirit. Mm -hmm. now, Job said this, one of the oldest scriptures in the Bible, in Job 32, verse 8, the spirit uh, uh, of man 
he, he says, you know, the Lord is, is, gives them understanding. Mm -hmm. There is a spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. Job 32, verse 8. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about, revelation knowledge by the Spirit yeah, of God. I just feel like right the now there's people who are watching this. They, they're really um, just trying to know God just through their, through their intellect, through reasoning, which, which you can to some extent. But to really receive from God, you're going to have to receive in, in the realm of your heart. In the realm of your spirit. Yeah, and, and um, you know, there are certain things in life that you just can't understand uh, just with your reasoning. You know, like the reason why I married my wife, it's not just because I reasoned, the, you know, all the, all the great things. Like I had, to, I had to love her with my heart and, and step out and marry her from that heart relationship I have with her, not just my a spiritual thinking. Connection. Some people are, are just thinking so hard that, and they're not really listening to God speak in their heart. It, um, in their spirit. They're getting paralysis by analysis. Amen. That's great. You know, it, this even works in the realm of business. Mm -hmm. You know, your brother Andrew is one of the smartest people that I've ever known. Mm -hmm. Tremendous uh, intelligence. Mm -hmm. He never had to be in all of school clear through his senior year. They actually interviewed him on television. He went to Colorado School of Mines. It takes most people five years to get a, a BA degree. He got his BA in three years there at School of Mines and graduated uh, as outstanding chemical engineering student. Mm -hmm. And then got his master's. It takes most people seven years there to get a master's. He got his master's in his fourth year. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he got that, again, graduated as, as the outstanding chemical engineering student. But then when he got in, and he's in the oil field development business, mm -hmm. but when he got on the field, there were some challenges that he didn't know how to solve. Nobody in the industry could explain what was going on. I remember he was down in North Texas and he called me and said, I, I can't understand this. Nobody that we know in the industry can explain what's going on. I said, Andy, why don't you take 30 minutes and pray in the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. And he took 30 minutes and prayed in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And after he prayed in the Holy Spirit for 30 minutes, God revealed to him what was happening. And he, I asked him the next day, he said, oh, yeah, God showed me. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We have, you know what? Life isn't fair. Mm -hmm. We've got the Holy Ghost with us. And, and the, the Holy Ghost will help you, right? It'll help you in ministry. It'll help you in relationships. It'll help you in business. And it's the spirit of man where God speaks to us. We're going to go for a short break, and we'll be right back after this break. Bless you. Friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue, and I've been teaching Destined to Win from the book of Ephesians. This is one of the greatest teachings that I've ever done. I've had more requests for this teaching than almost any teaching we've done. I've got it in eight parts as I taught it in church in CD form, also in a USB, and then I also have the teaching in 16 parts as we've taught it on television with my son, Dr. Aaron Perdue. And in this 16 part teaching, I am just thrilled with all the different things that was brought in. So you can get the eight part CDs or the USB that has all the video and audio, or you can get the 16 part as taught on television. Call us and let us know what you'd like to have. We have a special offer today and we're so blessed to have you. Check out our website, karischristiancenter.com. We have this and many other materials, and we have all of these things online for free. Blessings. Praise the Lord. We've been talking from Ephesians chapter 1, and we've been sharing on Paul's prayer. And we said when Paul prayed, he didn't talk about lack. He didn't talk about need. He didn't talk about, I'm so sick, I'm so poor, I'm so defeated. He talked about, this is who Jesus is. This is what he's called you to do. And this is what he's invested in you so you can get the job done. Uh -huh. Amen. And that's how we need to pray in a New Testament sense. If you want to know a powerful way to pray, study Paul's prayers here in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Philippians 1 and Colossians 1, they're very f powerful prayers. Mm -hmm. And if you'll pray those, I believe God will give you revelation. Now, the first thing we said that Paul prayed, he prayed that they would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him. So they'd get to know Jesus personally and intimately. Secondly, he prayed that they would know the hope of his calling. 
But then he begins to pray this in verse 19, that they would know the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is to come. So he prays first that you would know him, know Jesus. Secondly, that you would know his purpose. And then he prays third, that you would know his power. Mm -hmm. And there's three kinds of power he talks about. The first word for power used here uh, is the word dunamis. And that's talking about ability. Praise God. So he says, I want you to know the exceeding greatness of his ability, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. That's, that's the same power that Jesus had, miracle working power. But then he says, uh, he says in the last part, according to the working of his mighty power. And that word power there comes from the Greek word kratos, which is talking about God's, God's dominion. And it's talking about power manifested through a reigning authority, mm -hmm. right? Power manifested like a kingly authority, and, and then they operate in ability, mm -hmm. right, with their authority. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a combination of authority and ability. And then he says this, far above all principality and power, and that Greek word is exousia, which is talking about uh, authority, so far above all principality, all power, all authority, Jesus is the highest authority mm -hmm. in heaven and earth and in the grave, mm -hmm. praise God, and he's living in us. Well, would you understand that? It will turn your life around. It's funny because there's so many like politicians today. You think, um, you know, <laughs> that they, you know, some of them have gained millions and millions of dollars through, through political connections and lobbyists and these types of things. And you think, you think someone would just... Well, I have enough, you know, I'm, I'm up, up in my 70s, I should just retire. But no, some people, they, they just want more and more power, this type of power, this type of authority where they can reign and control things. But really, God is the ultimate authority. Jesus is the ultimate authority. And we have authority. We have true power in Him. In Him. Praise God. Yeah, a lot of people are just going to die and lose yeah, boy. Luke, you know, I was thinking about that today when you, when you leave. Have. I've got a neighbor, and I've been witnessing to him for several years. I've been living here 11 years. And his brother was born again Catholic, used to watch Joseph Prince, watch me on television. And his brother told me before he went home to be a Jesus, God put you here for my brother. Mm -hmm. And his brother's a little, you know, Andre. I'm a little Andre. But uh, praise God, Jesus loves us. Yeah, there's some but, people in that world have that lust for that type of power. Yeah, but he's not that type of person at all. But, but my neighbor has lots of wealth in mm -hmm. the natural. But I thought, you know what? When you leave, you're going to leave it all. Mm -hmm. I never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we leave, it's, we're, it's all staying here. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, don't lay up your treasures on earth where thieves break through and steal. Mm -hmm. But lay them up in heaven. And uh, man, we want to be operating in God's purpose, right? We want to know Jesus, know what he called us to do. And then it takes God's power to fulfill God's purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's talking about. So he says, know him, know what he called you to do and invest it in you so you can get it done. So he says, I want you to know the exceeding greatness of his power to those of us who believe. This isn't power for unbelievers. Mm -hmm. This is power for believers. Mm -hmm. According to the working of his mighty power, this power was released in Christ when he raised him from the dead mm -hmm. and set him at his own right hand. Far above all principality, all authority, all might, all dominion, every name that is named. In this earth world and also in the world to come, the name of Jesus is higher than any name. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now, Paul or Jesus prepared his disciples for his departure in John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And if you don't have my teaching on that, I encourage you to get it's, uh, it's volume number five of my teachings from the gospel of John. But I talk about in that, you know, two main things that Jesus told his disciples. He said, number one, I'm giving you the authority to use the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'm giving you the ability of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be here by your own, on your own. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul's praying, that they would know what the, the power, mm -hmm. right, the ability that's given to them when they operate in their God-given authority, mm -hmm. right, and purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when you understand God's purpose, you can operate in his ability and his authority. 
Remember when Jesus sent out the 70, you know, um, two by two to, to go heal the sick and cast out demons, and they came back and they were like surprised almost, that, hey, we used yes. your name, and uh, demons fled, and, and Jesus said, well, don't rejoice in that, rejoice in this, that your names are written down in heaven. And, you know, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's Luke Jesus chapter said. 10, about verse 19. Yeah. And, and it's talking about this same thing. But um, I love what you said there because what he says is all this works for, through a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so he prays, first of all, here in Ephesians chapter uh, 1 about the relationship, that you would have this revelation knowledge, this relationship with Jesus, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Knowing who he is, that you would have a revelation knowledge of what he's called you to do. And that along with knowing who he is and what he's called you to do, he gives you power mm -hmm. to fulfill that. And when you do that, notice what he says. He put all things under his feet in verse 22 and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Jesus is the head. We are the body and we are carrying out the ministry of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love what uh, Luke writes in Acts chapter one, verse one, when he says, this former treaty have I written, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Mm -hmm. Jesus began it, but it's carried on through the power of the Holy Spirit working in the church. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the head and we are the body. And when we submit ourselves to the authority of Jesus, mm -hmm. we can go and begin to minister in his ability. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Praise God, in the name of Jesus, we have authority, just like the disciples. In Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sent forth, he sent forth the 12 in Luke 9, and then in Luke 10, he sent forth the 70, and it says he gave them power mm -hmm. over sicknesses and all devils, praise mm -hmm. God, and told them, preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Mm -hmm. Praise God, and they came rejoicing that even the demons were subject to him through his name. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. The devil is not what he used to be. He is a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him in his death, burial, and resurrection. And he gave us the, the, a, a power mm -hmm. to walk in the victory that he won. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And he is seated at the right hand of God, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool, mm -hmm. waiting till we rise up and take that authority and walk in what he's given us. What a marvelous mm -hmm. gospel. That's awesome. I think, yeah, we all need to tap into that power that God gave us. You know, it'd be a shame to get to heaven uh, one day and have to apologize for having a normal life, yes. an ordinary life. We shouldn't have an ordinary life. We should have an extraordinary life because we have that mighty working power living in us. Amen. If your life is not supernatural, it's superficial. Amen. So there's no way you can explain my life except for the power and the goodness of God. Hey, we love you. God bless you. If you need prayer, give us a call today. Blessings. Do you know your true position in Christ Jesus? You have been saved, raised up, and seated in heavenly places with Him. You can stand against any attack of the enemy from a position of victory. You are destined to win. You can get the eight-part live teaching on CD for $48 or on USB for $35 or get the 16-part as seen on TV USB for $59 when you call 719-418-4000 or visit karischristiancenter.com. Hi friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue, and I'm gonna have my good friend, Jesse Duplantis ministering here at Karis Christian Center. He's ministered for us every year for the last 11 years. One thing he said that really has helped me, he said, in the realm of faith, most of the time I made a decision and God honored it. So you don't wanna miss these meetings with Jesse Duplantis. Come and receive the good word of God. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.